All right, at long last, I am finally 99% moved in. So I'm gonna show you the mess. There's my computer setup. Here's some stuff. This is the disaster that needs to be dealt with. Here's a table that my parents just gave me. Uh, there's a couple chairs that need to be recovered that would go with this. There is this clutter and all my acoustic foam, food, dishes, instruments. Retro gaming stuff, the cabinet that these cubes go in is with my dad, so we can fix that up. A couch that uh, someone gave me. Some miscellaneous stuff. Laundry, toiletries. Oh, my garbage can. This is my only garbage can. I have to get another one because over here I'm using my laundry basket for my recyclables. <laughs> Suitcase, an old recliner that was my parents, my bed my old dresser there's another dresser also by my dad that needs to be glued up sleeping bag and then all of my tubs that you will have already seen in my moving vlogs and then my computer box so that's it that is everything i own except for my van my motorcycle my snowmobile my the two cabinets that I said need to be glued, and the chairs that go with the table. That should be everything, except for anything that I've actually completely forgotten about. For example, these two tubs here uh, is like holiday things. I completely forgot about them, and I discovered them today when I went to go get my couch and this table. But that being everything that I own, I would like to talk about minimalism, and more specifically, my experience with minimalism. Oh, wait a minute. That's the wall where I normally stand and speak by, but I can't stand there because there's foam in the way. You know what, how about with the mess in the background? Yeah, I think this is a good spot to stand and show the truth of the, my lies of being a minimalist. <laughs> so I effectively became a minimalist long before minimalism was a thing, the, long before there was a term to define what it is that I was doing in purging myself of all these things that I did not need or did not want or whatever. Growing up, I was fortunate enough to have lots of toys. Certainly not every toy I wanted. I even had this book growing up about how having too many toys can be a bad thing. And it was a very well-written story that kind of got the message across to me. I was also fortunate enough to have a printer and lots of computer games, which means I would print everything. I can't see my, my body language here. I would print everything. <laughs> and so very quickly, uh, from a very young age, I accumulated so many things. You ever see in cartoons the stereotype of like opening a closet door and the closet is 100% filled, like there is no air and everything just pours out, like breaking the bottom of a cup and the water just pours out, everything just pours out. I legit had a closet like this. A full walk-in closet, granted with slanted ceilings. So like a third of the cubic footage of that type of room size did not exist because that was the roof. <laughs> but still, and I'll say it wasn't 100% filled. It was like 80% filled. There was a little bit of room on top where I could like look and see is something back there. Oh, now I gotta climb over it, like literally crawl and climb over it. And I don't remember when I initially decided that this was a problem, but I do remember spending a lot of time during high school organizing everything I owned. It was also at this time that I discovered van life and just general nomadic living in vehicles. Since I didn't have a van, I had a sedan. <laughs> and I loved the idea of having everything I own fit in a vehicle, so everything I own would be with me at all times. Then I could go anywhere and do anything and everything is just all right there and I never have to worry about forgetting something. And I also used to watch the show Hoarders a lot because my mom would joke about being a hoarder. And she was not an actual hoarder, though she does have a lot of things that she does not need. And she got that habit from my grandmother who lived through the Great Depression. My grandmother knows deeply from personal experience what it's like to go without, to not have, not just food, but I, anything in general. And so she keeps everything because I might need that someday. Or there's nothing wrong with it, why should I get rid of it? 
etc, etc. And there's nothing wrong with this mentality as long as it doesn't become excessive. As long as you have enough space to put the things in and you're willing to pay to store and maintain these items, either in a storage facility or by having to rent a bigger apartment or having to buy a bigger house or, or having to build a garage or whatever it is. Because if something is not adding value to your life, it is detracting value from your life because it takes effort and time and money not just to maintain items, but just to have them because they take up space that you could be using for other things, things that are going to actually add value to your life. Anyways, I got on a little bit of a tangent there. So I used to watch this show Hoarders and they would talk about how ideally you would go through every single item and actually just sort it out. But of course on that show, they never had time. They would go to the people that were getting evicted and it would be like, you have one week, you have to get rid of everything, otherwise we're kicking you out. And so they would, they would just, in a hurricane, bring in a huge team of people to sort through everything. Tons of stuff would go into dumpsters. And this really, really upset me because a lot of that stuff was still perfectly good. There was nothing wrong with it. They could have donated it. And so because I wasn't getting evicted or kicked out of my parents' place and my closet and room had definitely achieved hoarder status, there was no floor to walk on. The vast majority of the time, over half of my bed was covered in clutter too. I couldn't sleep. I mean, I could, but I would literally just sleep on items. And it honestly amazes me that I had even managed to collect that many things. I never really thought about it that much, that how did I have so much stuff? By far, my biggest regret with my minimalism experience is not documenting more of it. I wish I had before and after pictures. But I never thought to take photos of a mess because it's a mess. And so like, like any time family would be coming over for a holiday, my mom would clean up the house and then she would take a picture of the house when it was clean. And it was just, oh, it's gonna be months before I see the house this clean again because the house will just naturally collect clutter over time and then it won't get that thorough of a clean until the next time the family are gonna come visit. <laughs> and so that was my mentality is you take photos of things when they're clean, not when they're messy. And also because when I started cleaning and organizing, I never thought of it as starting a process that would last for the next 15 years. I don't know if I really thought anything of it. It was like, I just kind of started doing it. And so I went through every single item many, many, many times. So like I'd go through everything I own, an incredible amounts of paper junk, and just like on the show Hoarders, I would sort out first everything that was just actually garbage or recyclable, and then I would sort out everything that I don't want but someone else could use, and I would put that somewhere else or I would donate it, and I would just continue this process over and over and over again, continuously going through everything I own, resorting it, reorganizing it different ways, rearranging it in my room, moving my furniture around. I was that kid. I was constantly rearranging my room and moving furniture around and moving it between rooms. At one point I had one closet that was just for Hot Wheels tracks. And I'm not talking about storing them, like I had it all set up in there and that was the Hot Wheels room. And then I rearranged it again and I put other things in there and then I put my furniture there and my bed there and everything was just all over the place all the time. And I just continued to do this over and over and over again until I felt like I was living very minimalistically. I felt like everything was organized and had a place and I had a reason for every single item that I owned owned and why I owned it. And then I moved to my cousin's place where I had a smaller room and a tiny, tiny, tiny closet. And all of my things got condensed into this smaller space. And I realized, oh no, I still own so, so many things. And it also took me so, so many trips to be able to bring everything there with my tiny sedan. And it was during my time living there that I decided I really wanted to try nomadic like van life living. And I upgraded from a sedan to a hatchback, but there was still just too much stuff. There's no way it would all fit in that car. Luckily, I had a friend with a truck and a trailer to help me move out all at once. <laughs> and so, so Slowly, over years, I just continued this process all the time. And then quite recently, if you haven't seen already in my moving vlogs, I originally wanted to move cross country. And what I was trying to do is sort all of my items into three categories, things to donate, things to leave at my parents' place, and then one van load of all the items that I actually cared about and actually wanted. And I would take all of those items with me in one trip in my new minivan cross country. And those would be the only items I actually care about. Everything else, everything else would be left behind but I ended up not moving cross country. I ended up moving not even all the way across town. But regardless, I wanted to at least simulate this experiment, that experience of going cross country and having that one trip of all the most important items. And I admitted defeat. 
I just didn't have enough time to condense everything enough and I was like, well, this is silly. I'm going to take multiple trips over here anyway, so why bother? <laughs> but I am convinced that if I was actually moving cross country, I would have made it work. I would have been able to do it. Just by judging the amount of things that did fit in the van and how many things were in the van that I could have taken out to make room for other things, like, I, I, I could have done it. Regardless, here I am now in my new apartment. This is by far the most amount of space I have ever had in my entire life. And despite living as minimalistically as possible, like hardcore minimalistically, hardcore for me at least, I know there are plenty of other people that go way more hardcore than me, but I went as hard at it as I could for as long as I could, for well over a decade, because I was very indecisive about what to keep and what not to keep and all that. And also I kept buying things. <laughs> but after all of that, moving here was still a huge hassle. And I made many, many, many trips back and forth. And honestly, one of the biggest reasons that I was attracted to minimalism in the first place no longer applies to me, or sort of doesn't anymore. Basically, I'm just another typical Gen Z kid. Technically, I'm a millennial, except I'm right on the cusp, so I'm a zillennial. But anyways, I'm just another typical Gen Z kid who didn't want to go to college because it's way too expensive and I'm not guaranteed that I'm gonna be able to pay off my debts. And so I never got a good job. Also, I do my part to contribute to the fact that we are living in the greatest mental health crisis of all human history. I have been plenty depressed and so also was unable to keep a good job because of that. Regardless, I had not had money to have an apartment, to pay for a moving company, to do things the normal way. Versus now, I've actually been able to keep a job for a couple years. I'm getting a second job or I just got it this morning actually. After going through the massive pain in the butt that you can see in my moving vlogs of moving everything and actually you only saw a sliver of it. Now I'm just like why don't I just work more at my job, earn more money, save it up and then next time I move I'll just have a friend come over with a truck or I'll pay a moving company and they'll just do it all for me because despite having the biggest vehicle I've ever owned, the a minivan, it still took me so many trips and so much effort. Like, uh, If I can just pay someone else to do it for me, I think I would. <laughs> and of course I said this in many other videos, but one of the reasons I didn't want anyone helping me was because we're in a pandemic and I didn't want anyone touching my stuff, but I can quarantine my items. I can have one tub of all the things I'm actually gonna need and I'll, do, I'll take that tub with me. And everything else, I'll have a moving company do it. And if one of the people that was moving all of my items catches COVID and, and turns out that he was breathing all over my stuff and being contagious, being pre-symptomatic, it won't matter because everything that the moving company handles will just kind of shove it to the other side of the room and I'll just not touch it for a week because COVID can't survive on services for that long and then it'll be fine. All my things will be sanitized by time, not the spice or essential oil of, of thyme. I'm talking about time. Tick, tick, tick. Changing my lighting and ruining my video. <laughs> There's also so much that I have not done because I did not have those items. There's so many items that I now need to buy because I have an apartment. I had to buy a plunger and a vacuum and a broom and dishes and pots and pans. Actually, I haven't had to buy most of these things that they've been given to me by people who have extras that they don't use anymore, which is very nice. But in general, like I have so many more things now. I have a table and a couch and a recliner and a rug for years and years. I swore I would never own a rug because it seemed like such a silly, unnecessary thing. Why would you take the resources that could be making clothes for those that don't have clothes and turn it into something that you're just gonna throw on the floor? And then I got this new apartment and I immediately realized every single time I come home, I'm tracking snow in. And so I would just leave my shoes in the entryway, but then the snow would melt off my shoes and I'd just have this big puddle in the entryway. And so my parents gave me a rug and it's nice. I can leave my shoes on the rug and that like soaks up the water from the snow. No. And at this point, it's almost like I see minimalism as like the new vow of poverty. Except a vow of poverty is choosing to not have money or anything, versus minimalism is just a vow of not having items. But any sort of vow of lack, when taken to an extreme, is simply depriving yourself of life. Why would you want to do that to yourself when life can be whatever you want? Now, of course, I'm still very glad that I've gone through this experience to learn what I've learned. I think it's completely okay to take something too far. 
In the same way that my grandma went through the Great Depression and so she went way too far with keeping everything. Even though there's so many of those things that could be donated to other people that will actually get value from those things rather than them just sitting in their garage. And she understands this and is slowly trying to work on this. And this is not just my grandma. I'm not trying to throw shade at her at all. That's just like her entire generation. But yeah, in the same way that she way overcompensated for that, it's like my generation is now overcompensating for having grown up in excess, in having too much of everything everywhere all the time. And so of course, with pretty much everything in life, the ideal is somewhere in the middle. And so I'm slowly trying to become no longer a minimalist and just try to live like a normal life to allow myself to have the luxury of a couch and not spend all of the time that I sit on it worrying about, oh, how am I gonna move this when I move? What am I gonna do with it? I'm gonna have to deal with the cost of, of hiring a rental company to move it for me or who knows what, because that's really not that big of a deal anymore. I just, I just save up some money for my job. I'll just figure that out when I get there, I guess. If I need to give it away, then I'll give it away. The same way that that's how I got this, is that other person just did not have the space in their new place, and so they're like, here you go, free couch. It's like, ah, oh, cool. I should probably clean it, though. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some sort of enjoyment out of this and or got some information that you would deem valuable to you. Let me know down in the comment section below what your experience is with minimalism. I'd be fascinated to hear about it and discuss it. If you want to see more, then subscribe and ring the bell to stay tuned. Click like, because apparently that still matters in 2021. I don't know how the YouTube algorithm works. Yet, that's something else that I'm going to explore in other videos. And lastly, if you want to help support me and my channel, then share my videos with anyone else you think might find them interesting. So thank you so much for watching, and take care.